Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue our series of ultra budget deck techs. That's right, this is the series of course where you'll not be required to spend a single rare or mythic on any of the decks that we're about to build. That is awesome! So, without further ado, we will continue our series of dual color decks in a deck that I'm calling today, basically, Auras. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So as you can see today, our Auras deck is going to be based upon white and black. We're looking at an average mana curve about 1.6. We are rocking 12 creatures, for instance, 4 artifacts, 28 enchantments, and only 20 lands. The gist of our deck is just simply this. We're going to load up a bunch of auras onto one of our creatures, get them super big, and just smash our way to victory. But how exactly are we going to be able to pull that off with what we have? Good question! Let's go ahead, let's explain that right now with all of our creatures. We only have one drops in this deck, which is very unique, but we'll explain why in just a moment. So we have Slumbering Keep Guard here. So this Humanite's a 1-1 one -one where it reads, when an enchantment enters the battlefield under control, we scry one. Great for filtering in the early part of the game. And also in the mid to late game, for three mana, we can give it plus one, plus one until end of turn for each enchantment we control. We also have Hateful Idol on here, so this 1-2 for 1 mana has lifelink, and now it reads, whenever an enchanted creature dies, we draw a card for each aura controlled that was attached to it. So this is actually awesome for us if any one of our creatures gets blown up, because we can refuel our hand for the later part of the game. And then finally here, it looks a little awkward in an enchantment deck, but hear me out for a second here. Ginger Brute here is an awesome little food golem, where it has haste, and for paying 1, it can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. So it kind of gives us a little bit of extra invasion to help forcefully push out that damage to ensure we can get to our victory. And also in a pinch, we can also sacrifice a ginger brute by tapping and then we can also gain some life by then sacrificing the creature. Ideally enough, if this works out with a couple of extra auras on it with a hateful idol on, again, this will help us refuel and also help us stabilize if we ever end up getting overwhelmed by our opponent. Now, as far as all the auras are concerned, we have quite a bunch, but they're pretty consistent in what we're trying to do to get our game plan off. So we're going to need, of course, some way of either getting evasion or protecting ourselves because we don't have that many creatures to swing with. So in terms of pumping up our creatures for a massive amount, we have Ethereal Armor here and also All That Glitters. Both of these cards could do the same thing. They give us a plus one, plus one for each enchantment we control. Ethereal Armor, however, will also give us the benefit of giving us first strike so we can push through that damage and take out some pesky creatures. And All That Glitters will also give us the plus one, plus one for artifacts and enchantment we control. We actually only have one enchantment technically, but it is still pretty nice that we give that extra bonus. For the evasion, you have Griffspoon here, which gives us a plus one, plus zero, and gives our creature flying. However, we can also pay three to get the boon back from the battlefield attached to a creature. We can only do it, of course, at sorcery speed. And then finally, to make sure we have a little bit of extra protection on the backswing, we have Sentinel's Eyes, so this will enchant our creature, giving it a plus one, plus one, and Vigilance. Also, similar to the Griffspoon, we can use its escape mechanic to make sure we can bring back the aura in case we need it later on. As far as the extra amount of push besides the Ethereal Arbor and all that glitters, technically we do have another creature, and that's going to be Michigo's Reign of Truth. So this awesome little saga will give us also the plus one, plus one pump for each artifact and enchantment we control for the first couple of turns. And then once it flips, it can become Portrait of Michigo, which also gets a plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. So technically, this does count as extra creatures we may need later on in the game. Finally, this is going to be a bit of a slightly controversial option here, but I prefer it and I'll explain why. Myra's Grabs, the simple little aura just gets to be considered removal, where it gives an enchanted creature minus three, minus three. The reason why we want Myra's Grabs as opposed to other options here, hear me out for a second, this is going to be, again, something that you want to attach with ideally having a hateful idol on out. So if this is out, of course, then we can get some card draw off of the creature if it does get removed. So that's kind of why we want it. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. But if you do feel like you might want some more stronger removal, there could be plenty of options out there such as ossification in case you want to mix it up a little bit and then finally in the three drop slot we're going to need at least a little bit of extra something in order to generate some more creatures in case we need to jump block against go wide decks or go big decks against us so that's going to be cathar's call this three mana aura enchantment reads enchanted creature has vigilance and at the beginning of your end step you create a one one white human creature token that basically is just going to help us again go wide not by much but just enough where we can at least provide some chump blockers while we build up our game plan 
And then finally, the last card that's going to give us a little bit of catch-all protection and flexibility is going to be the one and only Orzhov Sharn. This is actually a really sweet little card, so I'm going to talk about this one also for just a moment here. So this white and black instant allows us to choose one, where we can either return target creature, we control it, all of its auras attached to it to our hand, we can then destroy target creature, and we lose life equal to its toughness, or we can return target creature card with a mana value of one or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. In other words, this is perfect utility for the deck, and this gives us the amount of flexibility we're definitely going to need where we need to bounce something back to our hand and protect ourselves from a wrath or a spot removal. We can also then destroy something in a pinch. Yes, we'll lose some life, but we do have Hateful Eidolon for a little extra life gain and Ginger Brute. And of course, the other final one where we can bring back any one of our one drops, which is exactly why we wanted one drops in the first place, back to the battlefield so we can immediately keep doing damage and applying more pressure to our opponent. As far as the mana base is concerned, remember that we are a budget deck, so we're going to keep it as simple as possible. 10 planes and 6 swamps. We can also add on some obscure storefront here, which kind of help us do a little bit of filtering, and also a little incremental life gain to help us do some small stabilization in the mid part of the game. If you do want to take this in the best of three, here's what I'm going to recommend for you. So, for the first part of it, we're going to recommend Deafening Silence, which is an awesome enchantment, and also it slows down combo and control decks out there for us. We'll have Duresses here, which we can swap around a couple of our auras for, just to make sure we can then take apart some of those com combo and control decks I just mentioned. If we need a little bit more protection, a little bit of a stronger creature, you have a Danto of Vanguard here, which is an awesome creature which can give us Indestructible if we need to pay the four life, but usually that's not a big deal for us as we get some more life gain off of, say, like our Hateful Eidolon. Trespassers Curse here is going to be something that punishes the go wide decks out there, such as goblins or sometimes elves out there. So this is what we want to bring it in for. And then finally, Tire Mat here, Chosen from Death. So this is going to be our pseudo graveyard hate for us. It's also an enchantment itself. So this one's what's helpful for us to get a little bit extra pump. We really don't worry about the devotion part of it. But again, we're mostly just here just to exile some cards and gain some extra life along the way in a pinch. As far as basic strategy and how to pilot deck, it's pretty simple. But of course, it will get a little tricky as the game goes on. In the early part of the game, of course, course you're gonna want to put down one of your one drops and make sure of course you have at least one before you then begin the game once you do that then start loading them up with some auras ideally try to get your griff spoon and sentinel's eyes on as early as possible because these are going to help you protect as you do more aggressive swings to make sure that your sentinel's eyes will prevent you from being tapped out too early griff spoon of course giving you that extra evasion to prevent your opponent from just chump blocking you and then once you know the coast is clear then start loading up your ethereal armor your all that glitters and know that michigo's reign of truth is tempted temporary pump, but it will of course flip into a much more powerful creature once you get to the mid to late part of the game. Hold on to of course your Myers Grass until you can get rid of specific targets that might cause you problems, such as certain lords for your goblin enemies out there or elf decks out there. Know that again, once you get that ability to then put down that ethereal armor, your all that glitters or Michigo's Reign of Truth, then get that big massive pump that you'll need to then hopefully close out the game in at least one or two turns. If you do expect that your opponent is going to then have some Wrath's removal, hold on to your Orzhov Charm until you absolutely can cast it to protect everything you have, bounce it back to your hand, and then redeploy on the next turn to keep applying pressure to your opponent. One of the biggest weaknesses, of course, of the deck, and as I just mentioned right now, besides Wrath, more specifically, early game spot removal, because we don't have that many creatures to begin with, so if they manage to then keep removing each one of your creatures individually until you get that Orzhov charm, it's going to be a bit of a struggle, so be aware of that against certain decks, especially black decks are going to be your biggest bane of existence, and sometimes even white decks that have spot removal in the form of exiling effects. However, your best matchups are going to be green decks and red decks. If you manage to match up against one of those, once you get either one of your one drops big enough, most of the time they won't be able to push through that damage, especially if you can load up a hateful Eidolong. Most enemy decks out there are just going to concede because there's no way they're going to be able to push out any extra damage against you. Don't be afraid to put out your Cathars Call early on because once you can start going wide, you can then start applying a little bit of extra pressure because those little 1-1s one can chump block for days as you keep making them while you keep then building out your game plan. And then finally, of course, don't underestimate cards such as your Ginger Brute or your Slumbering Keep card. Ginger Brute, I know, as I mentioned earlier, it looks a little funky, but remember, that ability to then sink some mana to, to make it unblockable against anything except with haste makes it very hard for your opponent to then stop it until they might have an answer later on. And same thing with Slumbering Keep card. That plus ability that it has for three mana is a great mana sink once you get to the mid or late game. It could pump itself up if it has even a couple of auras on it, which can help you close up the game faster than what your opponent can do. 
So you can activate that ability at instant speed. Now, for those of you who are interested in this deck and you're maybe looking at possibly upgrading this to something a little bit more powerful, as always, just like my other deck decks, if you haven't seen them already, we have, of course, many ways you can, of course, upgrade into other variants. As you see on screen right now, I'll post up a couple of previous videos I've done over the past couple months and a couple of years to show you that there are many other ways that you can kind of expand to either do various colors or if you just like this set of style and maybe you just want to get a couple more rares and mythics into it, definitely check those out. I'll leave, of course, those links below. And of course, you can see the samples on screen right now if you just want to take a quick little screenshot shot to put it together on your own time and with that here are my final thoughts that i just want to give on the deck overall honestly this is definitely one of those decks i would categorize as easy enough to learn but definitely hard to master and that's obviously going to come down to of course how you need to read your opponent as you see while we do have a variety of creatures there's going to be moments where you might have to then cast off more spells or you might want to pump up instead one of your creatures to give them either evasion or just give them another push of power to overwhelm your opponent but of course it's going to take time for you to kind of see and the good news of course is that's why we build these decks in the first place so that way you can experiment with something without having to invest your rares and mythics into it until you feel comfy enough where you're ready to take the next step. But in other words, if you are a fan of aura decks, if you're a fan of go big strategies, if you're a fan of playing something that's a little bit more unique in how it plays, definitely I would say give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to make a giant ginger brood hateful Eidolon by drawing a bunch of cards off it or pumping your slumbering keep guard to just overwhelm your opponent and smash through with a giant hit, you'll have a lot of fun doing so and you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later.